And this is what the people who can, you know, afford $30,000 just for a ticket to a night out, you know, I'm sure they spent several thousand dollars on top of that. I mean, you know, what most of the people watching make in, in a year, these people were spending in a night. So there is this elitism that transcends elitism. It, what we're seeing here is that these people are our new gods, that these people are demigods, these people are celebrities, these people are, the, are um, our role models, these are the people that we need to aspire to, that we need to listen to, these are the people that we need to follow. You know, the Catholic Church was, was deeply involved in this. Um, there were Catholic clergy in the hall that night. Um, I think what they're doing here is, um, I, I think all of the above, all the brackets that you, you presented are correct. And I think that's maybe the difference between my work and a lot of other people's work because, yes, because these things all function on all these separate levels. And this is what I talk about when we're trying to do a kind of psychoanalysis of culture. But what we're also seeing here, it, to me, is, is actually a little more insidious than, than what I had gathered from you know, the material that I had seen. I hadn't seen it presented in packages quite in that way. And I think what we're seeing here, I mean, this, this entire thing reminds me so much of ancient Rome. It, it looks exactly and plays exactly like something that you would see on um, some festival in ancient Rome that you know you and I and, and all the rest of us you know would be standing out on the the, the cobblestones watching um, these aristocrats and these celebrities and these gladiators um, enter into this you know what is essentially a, a high ritual um, so what we are seeing here it, it's 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 very you know and the way that the uh, news report um, makes sure that you know that you were not involved this is you're not part of this this is something you can watch but this isn't for you you're not invited you will never be invited you know the the, the millions of the people pretty much everyone who is watching this will never gain access to this gala this is a this is a convocation of the gods so um we're seeing this um technology high technology as being you know, the greatest gift to uh, the, the powers of the empire to restore, you know, what, what I've been talking about since I started the blog, which is the restoration of the old hierarchies. And I think that, you know, that to me is, is the subtext here. Um, but there's another subtext that's really troubling is that um, one thing that I noticed uh, before this, this gala took a, a place. Oh, and also, by the way, gala is a term that meant um, priests of Anana in, in, in Babylon. So you know, it's just like, it's the whole smorgasbord. Um, so, uh, or Ishtar in, in Babylon, uh, Inanna and Sumer. But at, on the roof, one of the stories that I covered, I, I think that I included it in this, uh, in this as well, is that on the roof of the, um, the, the Metropolitan Museum, as this was taking place, and I think it's on the roof until October, is a 12 foot um, alien demon uh, the people that the, the, uh, have you seen this? It's called um, "We yeah. Come in Peace." Um, I, I don't even know how to wrap my head around this. I mean, it's, it's like, like, what reality are we living in now? I, I can't, um, I can't begin to imagine what the thinking behind this is. I'm, so, what people really need to understand is that image that you're looking at right now on screen, which is that 12 foot alien demon, and and it's not like I'm saying, you know, just being um, using hyperbole here. I mean, that's what it actually is. I mean, that's what it's presented as. That's what the artist who created um, explains it as. And and look at that image. I mean, that if that isn't like something out of you know Hieronymus Bosch's worst nightmares, I don't know what it is. It's a, you know it's a twelve foot demon, you know, with the the three heads, you know, similar to the Janus heads or the Cerberus heads. Or you know the the Hecate uh, you know triple goddess kind of feeling there. But what I see here, and what I saw very very clearly is that um, I happened to come across what was called the Millennium Dome Show, and the Millennium Dome Show was a presentation um, that took place in London in the year 2000, and um, it was staged 999 times. So you know if you, anybody who's a uh, a numerology spotter there you go but it's basically a presentation very like Cirque du Soleil presentation that took place in the Millennium Dome which was built specifically for the occasion uh, at this you know the Don, this is Tony Blair's big project Tony Blair New Labor all that kind of thing 
So there was this big giant dome, which you know certainly has uh, spiritual uh, connotations to the womb, but has also been used in, in architecture throughout history, you know, for various reasons. Um, and you know, there are various interpretations you can make of that. But anyway, the point of this Millennium Dome show <clears throat> is that it was about um, there was you know there was a narrative to the to the to the presentation, uh, and the narrative was that um, the demons of the air were um, being oppressed by the, the, the earth people. And the earth people were using technology to um, harness the power of the demons of the air. Um, and, and if you look at them, there was a comic book that came out with them. They're literally like little red guys with wings um, on their heads that look like horns and they sort of float in the air. So it was basically like, you know, the, the, the sons of heaven, the, you know, sons of God, um, you know, the fallen angels, and so there's this war that takes place and, you know, there's this whole thing where the tower is blown up and, you know, it's just, you have to see it to believe it. You'll blow your mind. But the whole point of the, uh, you know, the peace only comes through the, um, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the sexual union of the, um, these demons of the air who are called the sky people and, uh, you know, the, the, the children of men who are called um, the, the earth people. So the, 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 there can only be peace and, and tranquility and justice for everyone, you know, basically once the, um, the Nephilim are created. And you think, all right, well, that sounds like some crazy um, interpretation based on like some <clears throat> fundamentalist preacher's misinterpretation of what they're seeing. No, I mean, that's exactly what you're seeing. I mean, they, in case people didn't get the message, they put out a comic book on it. <laughs> and you know, it just, it just absolutely boggles your mind. And it's, it's like, if you look, if you really start to, and this is something that I've been really detailing for the past year or so, is that if you really start to look at a lot of the symbolism, and it's becoming more and more apparent and more and more repetitive, and, you know, this whole training process, is that there really is a belief in what Christians and Jews sort of saw as the Nephilim, as the fallen angels, as you know, the, the, the sons of heaven um, who were painted in, you know, in, in books like Enoch as, as the villains, um, that they're seen as the good guys, that they, they were, you know, if you could, because if you actually read Enoch, I mean, the, the, the watchers come to earth and they bring technology, they bring gifts. I mean, they teach human beings how to civilize themselves, how to, um, you know, technologies, uh, how to read the stars, all these sort of things. So I th a lot of people, over time have said, no, those are the good guys. Those weren't the bad guys. Those are the good guys. So in looking at this, this whole Met Gala, and again, this could just be my personal interpretation, blah, 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 disclaimer, disclaimer. But it's like we're seeing what it looks like the, the um, reconstitution of the iconography and the symbolism of the church, but all under the, like, the literal wing of this fallen angel up on the roof of the building in which this all took place. I mean, the symbolism could not possibly be more crystal clear. I mean, I would have to come up to you and start smashing you in the face with a hammer and, and screaming at you for this to be any clearer if people were actually paying attention to what was being said. And the problem is that people don't pay attention to what's being said. They pay attention to the way it's being packaged, the way it's being re-presented to them.